So there's a new killer bug out there. I think we better talk about it. So I'm Dr. Patrick Jones from the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine. And uh, there's a new pathogen or new disease that's been getting a lot of press lately. It's called Candida auris. Uh, and it's not a bacteria. It's not a virus. It's actually a fungus. It's actually a yeast. Uh, it's a candida. And there's lots of candidas that we've been wrestling with for years. And most of them aren't a big deal uh, in most cases. Uh, this one is. This one can make you very, very sick and can even kill you. Uh, and it's sort of new. We haven't seen it. It was first described and discovered in Japan in 2009. So this is a new bug. And since the discovery, it's been spreading. And since the discovery, the cases have been getting more serious. We've had more serious infections and more deaths because of this little yeast bug. Um, it's got several things about it that are problematic. One is that it's very common in hospitals. It's actually a nosocomial infection. All right, you don't get it, you know, from going to a salad bar where they didn't wash the utensils. You know, you don't get it from, uh, you know, going to somebody, going to school with somebody that has it. it it's it's a much more uh, likely to be a nosocomial infection. What does that even mean? A nosocomial is a, a fancy medical word and it comes from the Latin word for hospital. Okay, so nosocomial infections are infections you get in the hospital. Um, and the problem with those organisms is that because they're exposed constantly and continuously to pharmaceuticals, is they become resistant to antibiotics and antifungals and, and antivirals, right? Those nosocomial infections. They're usually bacteria uh, or yeasts. Um, and so you have bugs like Pseudomonas, you have bugs like MRSA, which is a methicillin-resistant Staph aureus, right? Um, but uh, the this particular yeast has become very, very common in the hospitals for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of those reasons is because hospital visits have become very, very common in the last few years, right? I mean, we've had a global pandemic with COVID-19. And we've had way more people in the hospital than we usually do. And those people are really sick. And so physicians are using a lot of antibiotics and a lot of antifungals to fight secondary infections or prevent secondary infections in people that are fighting that virus. And so as a result, uh, broad spectrum heavy antibiotic use is very hard on the bacteria in the body which is very good for the yeasts, right? Because they're in direct composite competition. Um, and the antifungals, if you hit the guy often enough with the same stick, pretty soon he's going to learn how to not get hit with that stick. And so this Candida auris has become resistant to the antifungal medications and has become very widespread in some of the hospitals because uh, of the excessive antibiotic use, okay? And so... That's the one problem is that it's resistant to a lot of to a lot of pharmaceuticals. The other problem is it's very difficult to identify, uh, and the symptoms can be kind of vague. You know, you get, they have a fever and they don't feel good, and and you know, sort of general symptoms, but they're not responsive to any medications. And in addition to the symptoms being a little vague, the organism itself is very very difficult to identify. You know, it's very difficult to identify that species of candida. Now, you can take a sample and send it to about any lab in about any hospital in the world, and, and they can tell you that there's a candida infection. But they can't tell you that it's candida auris because of the complexity of the organism and, and the limitations of the testing. Um, and so to identify that organism, you have to have, you know, DNA analysis equipment or polymerase chain reaction testing uh, equipment. Um, or there's a machine, a special machine. And the machine is called a laser-assisted desorption ionization time of flight mass spectrometer. Yes. And uh, nobody has one, right? <laughs> I 
I think that's a marketing problem, really. I think if they'd called it, you know, the Candida Matic, everybody would have bought one, right? But who's going to buy that other thing? I can't even say it, right? Uh, but <laughs> anyway, it's a pretty intense piece of equipment, and most hospitals don't have one. Most facilities don't have one. And so what happens is, you know, somebody gets sick, and they have, you know, obviously some kind of an infection because they have a fever and whatnot, and so they blast them with antibiotics. That doesn't help because it's not sensitive to antibiotics. It's a yeast, right? And so they blast them with antifungals, and this particular bug is resistant to most antifungals, and by the time they figure out what it is they're fighting, they're in real trouble, okay? And so as a result uh, of this lack of ability to diagnose it quickly, we're getting more opportunities for heavy resistance to pharmaceuticals. We're getting more serious cases, and we're getting more deaths. All right. So, I mean, that's awful. Uh, and what do we do about it? Well, the good news is that plants have been killing yeasts and fungi for a long time. For as long as uh, plants and fungi have been on the same planet, they've been fighting and so there's a lot of plants that have some good activity against uh, yeasts and fungi. And there are some things we can do. First of all, maybe we should live a lifestyle that decreases as much as possible the likelihood of us ending up in a hospital. That'd be good, right? Just getting healthy in general will we'll decrease a lot of the things people are going to the hospital for. The second thing we could do is we could learn how to use other options to solve our issues than pharmaceuticals and modern medicine. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with pharmaceuticals and modern medicine, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with hospitals. I mean, bless those guys for the work they're doing. It's amazing. Uh, I'd be dead twice if it wasn't for hospitals and surgeons and smart mechanics, all right? But there's a lot of things we're going to the hospital for, and there's a lot of things we're going to the emergency room for, that we don't need to go to the emergency room for, okay? Uh, we're tying up the system. We're filling up with cases and situations that don't require that level of intervention. Uh, and if we could learn, first of all, to live a lifestyle that was healthy, and second of all, to solve most of the problems we're going to the doctor for using foods and herbs that can change everything with the dynamics of our health, we're going to be less likely to be catching this bug. The other thing is uh, that there are things that we can do with herbs to fight fungal infections and yeast infections and bacterial infections and viral infections. There's a lot of plants that are very good at fighting those things. You know, one thing we can do, the first thing we can do is we can improve our diet. I already mentioned that. Uh, but we can also feed and support the good guy bacteria that are in our bodies. You see, our bodies are filled with billions of beneficial microorganisms, most of whom are bacteria, and they do all kinds of things. They, they you know, modulate our immune system. Uh, they help with digestion. They help with metabolism. They help with uh, mood and emotion. They produce serotonin and all kinds of neurotransmitters that are really good for us. And they also take a lot of space and use a lot of resources that candida needs. All right, and so it's a population dynamic. And if we take an antibiotic and wipe out all the bacteria in our gut, what does the candida do? It's like, wow, look at all this great real estate. Nobody lives here, I guess we'll do it, right? And the next thing you know, you have a way higher population of candida than you do of beneficial bacteria, right? So careful use or no use of antibiotics, unless it's essential, right? Uh, and the other thing is that we can feed those good bacteria. They eat, they love insoluble fibers from plant fibers. The, the stuff we can't even digest. It's really common in root vegetables, but it's also really common in herbs like burdock and elecampane and dandelion. These real stringy, tough root herbs are phenomenal food sources for those beneficial bacteria. So we could feed those guys. And while we're feeding them, we might as well give them some friends, right? Send some reinforcements for the battle and and take probiotics. That'd be good for our gut and for, you know, keeping the numbers where we want them. Fermented foods, keep the numbers where we want them. Um, 
The other thing we can do is we can stimulate our immune system. If we're fighting an infection, we can stimulate an Im our immune system. There's there's herbs like, uh, you know, olive leaf, echinacea. There's all kinds of herbs. Powdery arco. There's all kinds of herbs that can stimulate our body, specifically our immune system, to fight pathological organisms. All right. There's also herbs that can kill yeasts and fungi. You know, Monarda fistulosa, which is a uh, bee balm, right? Uh, or bergamot, they call it. It's not the same bergamot as they make the essential oil out of. It's a it's a mint family plant. They have the same name for some reason. But the Latin name's Monarda fistulosa. That's a good one. Uh, black walnut is a good one. Garlic's a good one. Uh, goldenrod is a good one. Oregon grape. There's a lot of them that have very specific successful activity against yeast organisms. And the difference between taking a pharmaceutical for a bacterial disease or a, a fungal disease and taking a plant is a difference of magnitudes of complexity. If you take an antibiotic, that's one chemical. You know, penicillin has one chemical in it. It's penicillin. That's it, right? And and antifungals have one chemical in them. That's it. Garlic has lots of chemicals in it that kill bacteria and lots of chemicals in it that kill fungi. You know, uh, almost all of these plants have multiple different constituents in it that are attacking that fungus or that yeast or that bacterium from multiple angles. And if you combine you know, three or four or five of those together, you have this huge broad spectrum arsenal to fight that bug from so many directions that it's really difficult for them to develop resistance to it. I've had in my, I'm a veterinarian, okay, and I'm also a traditional naturopath. And in my veterinary practice, and in my traditional naturopath practice over the years, I've had a lot of cases of infections, bacterial and fungal, that were not remedied by pharmaceuticals. The pharmaceuticals weren't working. Um, and when I used herbs on them, they cleared right up. And I think it's because of that. I think it's just because the bugs get resistant to one chemical pretty easily. But it's very difficult for them to get resistant to a complex, you know, orchestra of chemicals, a whole group of different things that are all attacking from different angles and different directions. And so... That's another thing we can do. So we can support the good bacteria. We can support our immune system if we get sick. That's a good idea. Um, and we can actually kill the bugs if we need to with direct action against the pathogen. Uh, what else can we do? Well, we could learn some stuff. You know, we could learn how to eat. We could learn what herbs are good for our immune system. We could learn what herbs are good for killing this or killing that or fixing this or fixing that. Information and knowledge is an extraordinarily empowering thing. And if you'd like to learn more about that, I would really encourage you to have a look at the Homegrown Herbalist School of Botanical Medicine. We get very, very deep into things, but we do it in a way that's very understandable and very comprehensible. Uh, is that a word, comprehensible? <laughs> we also make up good new words. Anyway, uh, <laughs> because I'm a veterinarian and because I understand pathology and anatomy and physiology and immunology and all and pharmacology, I'm able to approach things in a way that most herbalists aren't able to approach them and to understand them and teach them in ways that some aren't able to do. Uh, so there's some distinct differences. If you would like to learn more about it, if you'd like to learn the tools that can change your life uh, and turn a vacant lot full of weeds into a pharmacy, have a look at the Homegrown Herbalist School of Mechanical Medicine. I'd love to join you on that journey. I'm Dr. Patrick Jones, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks for listening. Click that like button if you like it, and share this with your friends. I think it might be important.